So here's the DR back from its initial service and it's back on the bike lift. The um, I think I initially said the shocks feel not bad but previous videos have shown why, why they are too soft and the calculation shows they're miles too soft as well. There's just too much sag and you can't use preload. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip out the shock and I'm going to take off the spring and I'll send it away to get revalved and uh, respringed and then I'll put it back in. So I'll basically show you how to take the spring out and it's pretty easy. So let me just um, start pulling a few things off the bike. I'll work through what I need to do. Obviously the first thing is the, um, the side panels and the seat and then I'll show you how the air box comes out and then basically it's uh, you want to slacken the spring off while it's on the bike and then it makes it easier because you don't want to take the spring off and then try and fight it in the vice and so I'll, t I'll slacken it on the bike and then it'll be much easier to work um, and as I said all the weights off it so the weights off the uh, the spring now and it's sitting on its its lowest level so let's make a start and get this uh, suspension upgraded so the airbox is held in by three bolts two on top and one round the other side in about the bottom and then you take off the uh, the rubber mounting on the front and it slides out well of course it would slide out if i didn't have my b and b plates on because that covers the slot in this frame so you just have to whip these off and uh and then it just whip, <laughs> and then it just comes out <laughs> so just that's a little trick if you've got b and b side covers or or frame protectors on the side you probably will have to remove them to take your box out but it's pretty easy a little screw there which keeps the air box on three bolts and it pulls out the side now to take the rubber um, join between the air box and the carburetor there's a circ clip at the, the rear of the carburetor and of course the screw is pointing up towards the tank the um, so I didn't want to take my tank off, I couldn't be arsed. So what I'll do is I'll just, uh, you can see here I've got a little um, socket in. And so I'll use, I'll just use the socket to take the circle clip off and then when I put it back on, I'll make sure the screw is at the bottom uh, and that'll be easier to get on and off. But anyway, you have to take that screw off at the front and then I'll pull my air box out and, uh, or my rubber air box uh, connector and then that's the shock fully exposed. So there's the air box out and uh, the shock has a bolt in the bottom and a bolt in the top and you can reach the bolt in the top through the side there. The, uh, so what I'm going to do is I've got a flat punch and so it just uh, I've already given it a whack and you can see there how you get great access to the locking ring and so I just belted it a couple of times with the flat punch and the locking ring comes off. So we'll just move that locking ring out the way and uh, and that's the shock ready to move. And now I think I've got a, a C spanner which should fit that locking ring as well. And so I'll see if I can start moving that. That, lock, that um, sorry, I've got a C span, spanner to fit the, uh, the preload spring and so I'll just uh, start moving that up as well. I might put a little bit of uh, silicon spray on it just to help it move. Now here's a C spanner that I had. This might actually be off a Norton uh, exhaust or something like that. But because there's hardly any preload on this bike, I've, al I've also given it a quick spray with silicon spray just to help it move. And you can see there, I haven't actually moved this at all. You can see, I can just get in, so it's not quite the right diameter tool, but it does fine for this. Um, it moves really easy because there's absolutely no preload on this bike. Uh, so they seem to come from the factory with, I think in one of my previous videos, there's about 18 kilograms of preload or 20 kilograms of preload, which is just a couple of mil. But, um, so this C-spanner, as I said, it's not quite the right one. 
but it seems to be gripping the, uh, the teeth fine. So I'll just slacken that all the way off and then I'll whip the shock out. And so as I said, any C-spanner will move it with its factory setting by the looks of it. And uh, because there's hardly any preload on this. So let me wind that out. So here's the final uh, two bolts coming out. I must admit this was a lot easier than I expected. So you can see down there, uh, you can get a 12 millimeter uh, socket and extension bar in. I've done the same to the top. So the top you can get through, it's just a 12 millimeter and they're not on the other side. So they both come out this side. So I'll take the bolts out and I'll uh, whip the shock out. So just let me get the bolts out and the shock should just uh, fall out. So what you'll find when you go to take the bolts out is because if you have your wheel hanging by itself, it actually puts a bit of tension on that piston. And so what I did was I just dropped the, uh, the bike a little bit um, it's sitting a little bit on the back wheel now and the bolts just the bolts just pull out because the tension's removed and so the key is the key is just to remove the tension on the back wheel and then the shock uh, bolts will just slide out uh, obviously you don't want to put too much uh, drop it too much you start putting compression on them and um, because it'll want to push the piston up so as I said if you find the bolts a bit tough to pull out just put just drop the wheel a little bit take the tension off it and the bolts will just slide out. And uh, so let me get this top bolt out and then uh, that should be us. So there's the shock out. You literally just come up through the top of the center of the frame there and it pulls straight out. And uh, I must admit that was one of the easiest jobs I've ever done on a motorcycle. So um, congratulations to Suzuki for making that pretty simple. Access was good. It was fairly simple, as I said. In the, uh, the air box, you remove three bolts, pull the snorkel out, remove the clips on the front and it all just pulls out. And then just take the weight off the back wheel and uh, the bolts will slide off as well. And remember to remove your locking collars before you take your shock out. Because it's a lot easier to work with it when it's locked on the bike rather than in the vice. That's just my opinion. Um, so there it is. So I'll get that spring off now. It just... You just pull the locking collar off at the bottom. I'll take the spring off and I'll get it off for a new valving and 8.5 kilograms a millimeter. So that's the rear shock done. Um, and once I get my uh, this back in, I'll then get to the front shocks. So as I said, I'm waiting on the rear shock first. I'll do that and then I'll get the front shocks done. But that was a very easy job getting it out. Getting it back in, of course, will be the hard <laughs> bit. But the, uh, that's an easy job for anybody who wants to do it. And here's all the baits. So that was really simple. And now the bolts look like they're the same, but I marked top and bottom just to make sure that I use the bolts in the same place. There's the air box. Um, that'll be off the seat. That's the bolts off the, off the air box. As I said, two in the top and one on the side. And that's uh, that's off my side covers. They are off my side covers, and they're off the air box. And these are all the tools you need. It's quite simple. You need a, I think that's a 10 mil socket, 10 mil socket, 12 mil socket. I took it off with that. Uh, a GIC screwdriver. I always use GIC, and I had to use the little um, uh, Weira spanner with the the number two Phillips on it because I couldn't I couldn't actually get in without taking the tank off and I couldn't be arsed taking the tank off. Uh, I did uh, use uh, the other tools I used was the punch to move the locking collar. I, I used the C-spanner which is the wrong C-spanner but there was no preload just slacking the spring off and uh, to take your shock um bolt so it's a 12 mil socket um, and I and you do need a fairly substantial rent um, uh, socket handle because it's uh, obviously torqued in because it's the shock um, and that was it um, and it came off pretty easy the uh, the hammer as I said was used to for the locking that and I had to cut the uh, 
the B&B &B side panel off because it, it, it covers this area here. Now I did notice when I had um, this off is that that does seem to get a little bit of a a hit with the chain. Um, so obviously that's uh, got a design purpose that that upper chain roller. Um, now mine's is fairly new and loose, but I can see why if that gets stuck with dirt, why it might cause a problem. I think most of the problems are actually caused by a loose chain uh, smacking into this when it doesn't want to move. So while I've got the uh, shock out, I actually might replace that with one of the ball bearing, seal ball bearing types, just to make sure. Because if that's not there, it's you're either hitting your frame or you're going to start hitting your casing as your chain flaps about. So I'll um, I will replace that when I'm here, and uh, and that'll be the back end done. Uh, and this is the reason I hate chains, bloody dirty things. That's why I prefer shaft drives. But anyway, the Suzuki doesn't have a shaft drive, so such is life. Okay, that's the shock out. As I said, I'll get it away, and uh, when I get it back, I'll show you how it goes back in. Thanks for watching.